Hello, my name is Casper René Johansen and I'm your YouTube philosopher. But why am I in my, uh, in my uh, uh, work shed uh, uh, that's uh, a bit way from my house? Well, that's because we're now under a current uh, lockdown when I made this video. So I'm actually taking care of my, uh, my, uh, my little daughter who's uh, usually now in a in a daycare center in a nursery but she's sleeping at home now so in order for me to be quiet i'm out here in my work shed in these uh, corona times so to speak it's actually maybe fitting to have this philosophy video out here in the shed we're about to construct a new future a whole new different future from before the corona pandemic that is uh, one of my points in this video, because this video here is about process philosophy and the uh, current situation of the corona pandemic. Now I can really philosophize with the hammer. I will come now with a tiny uh, introduction to process philosophy, but I'm not going to go that deep into it. You should watch the introductory video to process philosophy. But anyways, here is a short uh, introduction to process philosophy. And that's a philosophy that stems back to ancient Greece, even before Socrates was one of the first uh, pre-Socratic philosophers, the earliest philosophers. There was a guy, uh, Heraclitus, and he said, "You cannot step, you cannot step twice into the same river, because it's not the same water that flows through the river. Everything changes." He also said, "Pantare, pantaria," uh, and that means uh, everything flows, that everything changes. Well, isn't that just uh, common sense? Everything changes. Everybody knows that. And, and everybody knows that uh, uh, things change, uh, the world change, politics change, uh, history change, uh, uh, your daily life routine it changes. Everybody knows that. Do we really? I'm saying in this video that we're kind of not knowing that, really, that everything changes. We keep forgetting. Imagine if I, uh, I uh, go through some uh, bad times in my life and I keep saying to myself, oh, it's never going to be any better, it's just rough times, uh, I'm totally fucked right now, it, it will never be any difference. I'm forgetting that everything changes. Even if I, uh, uh, a few years back, I start quitting smoking. When you quit smoking, you could have the thought, ah, oh, this... This uh, feeling uh, uh, that I that I want to smoke, I need to smoke. This feeling is not gonna go away. I'm gonna keep having this feeling that I want to have a cigarette all the time. That's not gonna change. Then you then you forget it again when you quit smoking. That that the desire to smoke will change eventually. But when you're quitting smoking, you're forgetting that. It's also when well, you're really, really sad, you really can think, ah, oh, it's never going to be better. I'm just going to keep being sad and miserable. That's what I'm, that's, it's never going to change. So in, that, in these personalized situations, you forget that everything changes. This pandemic situation that changed the future from a probable future that was before. And then there's the Corona pandemic that opens the, the future wide open. And that's the idea of process philosophy, that, is, that process philosophy has always been aware that these kind of situations like the corona pandemic, this is stuff that happens. And we keep forgetting that stuff like this happened. It happened before. Like, uh, remember 9-11? 9-11 with the two towers. That was also a... a business as usual, one could say. Nothing is, of course, business as usual. That's uh, an illusionary state of mind. 
that would think that that's a sort of a business as usual out there. But you had a probable future from before the plane hit that that event, 9-11 heaven, that changed everything. The uh, Archduke Franz, Franz Ferdinand in 1914, I believe, who was shot. And that event led to the First World War. And the events in the First World War led directly towards a Second World War. But before that Archduke was shot, there was a whole different probable future in mind. And stuff happens. These events happen in history. This is a dinosaur, a raptor. It's a pretty good uh, example of a process, even as it's uh, as uh, an animal. Uh, it's not even a metaphorical animal, this was an animal that actually lives, but it's a good metaphor for process, even what it happens uh, with these animals, because we have uh, different stuff happen in the dinosaur world that led to their demise, but there was a one event that catapulted them directly into uh, an extinction. That was the KT uh, event with the asteroid that struck the Earth. That really sent this event of changing from a world of dinosaurs to, to a, a world that was not dinosaurs. But they were not totally gone, because what happens? There's feathers. Check this out. There's feathers on this raptor because they evolve, look at even their legs, looks like a, a, a predatory bird's uh, a claws because it's well known in science that uh, dinosaurs, like these small raptor types, they became birds. We had an event like the pandemic happening and we are in total lockdown all over the world which changes a possible future radically. That is what I'm speculating as a philosopher in this video, as a process philosopher, that everything will change now, radically. Of course, this is speculation. I'm not a, a wizard, I, I don't know the future, nobody does. But there is a, a kind of a probable future that might happen after this uh, corona pandemic event and I will speculate about it as a philosopher, as a process philosopher of events that possibly can happen now. Before this corona pandemic there was a probable future of uh, Donald Trump winning the American election because he just won an um, impeachment trial, sadly he did, and okay the, the economy was good in the United States after the impeachment trial, which uh, he was uh, acquitted. So, that was a probable road leading towards uh, Donald Trump's uh, winning the presidential election here in uh, November 2020. But after this corona pandemic, the future is more wide open. And there's a probable future that with a bad economic in the United States and a terrible mismanage of this corona pandemic will lead to Donald Trump's uh, eventual downfall and he will not be elected president in November. I don't know that, of course I don't know that, but I'm speculating that this is a probability that might happen. China, before the corona pandemic, was a huge economical power and they were kind of like the new guy on the block, the, the, the new uh, big shot uh, economic uh, superpower. And they might be that in the future as well, but this whole corona pandemic shakes this a bit and it will, might lead towards there that somebody else would take China's place instead. Because everything is wide open now. Every economy in the world is fucked up because of this lockdown. So that widens the whole perspective now, processually speaking. Putin in Russia might fall because of this. 
I don't know, but it's a probability. If it's mismanaged, this corona pandemic, because Putin, he tells the story of this uh, loving, authoritative father, this, uh, this uh, great leader, strong leader, that, uh, that uh, takes Russia into the modern world and leads them, uh, guides them toward uh, greatness. But everybody starts dying in Russia, and they're not mis if they mismanage this pandemic, they can have a revolution on their hands. And Putin might fall because of this. This is the word game changer comes to mind with this event. And even with the, the 9 11, remember the, the 9 11 with the plane that uh, goes in? That's a game changer, right? That we don't know what's going to happen now. That we keep telling ourselves. Which is a mistake that we say, ah, at one point we will go back to business as usual. And there is a business as usual. There's never been a business as usual. Stuff like this happen. 9-11 happens. Corona pandemic happens. Things like this happens. Future now. And that's what process philosophy has always said. That the future is wholly and radically open. Anything may happen. Everything can change. Even a stone can change its appearances all the time. And there's no theory that says it's not possible that the laws of physics can change itself at some point, somewhere in the vast universe of billions upon billions of galaxies that one of them could have a radically changed setup of, uh, of uh, the physical laws. That's possible, because everything is possible when everything changes. And that's the future I think we're facing right now as a philosopher. That's, that stuff can happen, because everything is wide open now. Governments may fall, nations will crash, economies can crash. Everything may happen now. At one point, Maybe in a year or two or five or ten, we can look back and say, ah, it was actually good that this happened. Or it was actually very, very bad. It led to this and that. It's too early to speculate. It's kind of like being, right now, it's kind of like being on the RMS uh, Titanic. Kind of like being on this uh, Titanic. Will we hit an iceberg? and uh, sink or we'll make it to shore you never know they didn't know on the Titanic people were changing their life by being on this ship and say ah we're going to America we're gonna start anew we're gonna run away from everything and start anew good stuff is gonna happen and uh, the ship sank that's also the event when the ship hits the iceberg, that's the event that changed everything. From that end, it was uh, totally doomed. The, the ship will sink. But before they hit the iceberg, it could not have hit an iceberg. just uh, went to shore and uh, other stuff would happen. So with this whole corona pandemic, what is the future? What will the future hold? And this has just been speculation from my point. But... Let me summarize my points in this video and why I'm making this video. That everything now is wholly and radically open. It's an open future. Really open, like a, a butterfly that opens up. We don't know what's going to happen. But it has always been like this. And we forgot. We forgot it. And sometimes these events like the corona pandemic happens. Also to uh, remind us that the world is uh, unsafe, the world is changeable and not just changeable in the small uh, detail, it's changeable big. There's a difference by uh, uh, kind of spring your, your ankles or something, uh, spring your, your wrist and uh, it hurts and, and maybe you, uh, it will hurt for a couple of, couple of months but eventually it uh, it goes away and you forgot about the, the whole uh, bad uh, uh, wrist you had. But 
but you can also maybe fall in love, which leads to a lifelong marriage. It's not going to go away, that love that began with an in-love. Or, or you could be at the hospital and you thought, I'm uh, totally healthy, I'm going to have a check out, check up on my physical health, but I feel healthy, I, I think I'm healthy, and then get the diagnosis that you actually have a bad cancer, it looks like, and you might possibly die from that cancer. That changes everything in your life. And that's what I think of this pandemic, uh, corona pandemic situation, that something radically has happened that would not just go away down the line. We're not going to go back to a business as usual. We're going to have a sort of uh, new, we're going to have a new reality after this is over, if it's even really over. We could facing a, another lockdown in the, in the fall of 2020. What is good and what is bad in this situation? And there's also something in process philosophy where you cannot value, value or you cannot label things as good and evil because that's a static thing to do and everything changes. So each label you put on something will change. There's also this thing I got from a, another process philosopher, Nicholas uh, Rescher. And Rescher, he has this uh, thing with this uh, different uh, way to you to uh, understand the, the history and how it uh, moves. Uh, it's a uh, it's kind of like you, uh, different views on the historical progression, if there is one. And there are actually, you can say there are a, a six kind of uh, ways of viewing this uh, historical progression or uh, you know the, the the movement of history and the first one is uh, that history always moves towards uh, a new and radical new uh, situation that it's progressive that uh, there's always uh, something radical new that happens uh, during the course of history. That's uh, one way to uh, view history. And this progressive uh, way is uh, it's always a better that uh, it, it kind of improves that history is always a progressive uh, improvement. That's the idea in this uh, progressive uh, view of, uh, of the movement of history. The second is what uh, Nicholas uh, Rescher called the, the retrogressive, the movement of history uh, uh, goes towards a, 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 a lesser, uh, a better way, uh, one can say, that, that uh, it, it kind of deteriorates, uh, that, uh, that the state that a man is in becomes uh, worse uh, over history, it always becomes uh, more uh, worse. It's a, it's a very, very pessimistic way of, uh, of uh, looking at the movement of history. That uh, history goes uh, towards its, uh, its uh, end. It's a, 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 a gradual movement towards the end of history. The end of everything, one can say. Uh, it's kind of like the, the, you view history like in a book that there's a beginning, middle and an end and the history kind of moves from towards the end. The fourth way is uh, kind of a, a, a stabilized view of uh, the movement of history that nothing really new happens, that things pretty much stay the same. This is a very anti-processual, you can hear, but, but same shit different day one could say in this uh, stabilized view that that not much is going on it's kind of like uh, there's a small uh, uh, outburst to, to something but pr things pretty much stay the same we're, we're dealing with the same shit now the fifth view is a, a cyclic uh, cyclical view of uh, history where where everything uh, moves towards something and there's new stuff happening, but it's circles around and repeats. And it's a repeating pattern that goes on and on. 
there's still a lot of change going on, but in in but eventually with these changes, it would go back in a cyclic way and uh, repeats its, itself. History repeats itself. This uh, stochastic uh, viewpoint is where uh, kind of random events happen, uh, random fluctuations, uh, random changes happens uh, to in the course of uh, the run of the uh, history. But it never goes towards a specific uh, pattern or a, or, or, or a specific uh, uh, end, but but it just goes randomly off. It's kind of like a, a a viewpoint, a history where there aren't no fixed uh, meaning or uh, fixed movement. It's just a, a lot of random uh, processual uh, fluctuation. So that's also where I'm kind of stuck at. I'm very much uh, have a stochastic viewpoint, or I'm trying to have this uh, stochastic viewpoint. Also, with a bit with the the cyclical that uh, that things uh, go around and repeat, and there are repeated uh, patterns in this uh, history, and not just random. So I'm kind of stuck between uh, the fifth and uh, and 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 sixth. Uh, uh, point uh, of uh, looking at, at the movement of history. How would we view uh, this uh, pandemic uh, that's going on? Uh, will we view it from a, a stochastic uh, viewpoint or, or is it more cyclic? Uh, that's uh, the interesting here, thing here when, when, when looking at the future and the movement of history. Where are we going? Are we moving towards something specific? Now, the reason why I bring these uh, different six uh, viewpoints up is because I, I think it's interesting to to kind of try to understand how we we kind of view the movement of, of history, and especially in this uh, 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 Corona pandemic situation. But also, where are we going? Like I was talking about the Titanic, are we on Titanic? Is, uh, are we going towards a specific uh, goal? Or is there no goal in in the movement of history? Is it cyclical, going around, uh, starting backward? What is the whole thing? And the whole processual thing is, of course, that that it's not a stable uh, position. We, we don't have the, this uh, stabilized uh, position where nothing really uh, changes. It, it can pretty much the same. We, we don't view that as a process uh, uh, philosopher. You, you would more, probably more stochastic. That, that's the source. These are uh, random things, events going on that pushes uh, things in this direction and the next will go in this direction. And, it kind of makes sense when you think about it that we had uh, Barack Obama in the in 2008 uh, to 2016, and then suddenly it shifts uh, to uh, a whole other uh, time opposite. It, it shifts to a whole opposite, and we go in the Donald Trump uh, direction. Now it shifts towards a new recession, maybe with the the Corona pandemic. Will we make it in the end? That's also the process that everything changes. That some point, man will, will probably evolve to something else and will not be man like we are now. We might even look different, probably. Evolution is not finished. All of a sudden, it's not something that science invented. Ah, there's, there's things. Uh, like evolution and we evolve from an ape-like uh, creature and now there's man and then evolution stops. No, man might change at some point and become something other than what we are now. And we might even fuck everything up and, and die and not be around and then maybe the dolphin walks up on shore and starts uh, building rockets to the, to the moon. We don't know. Anything may happen in the future. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.